Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. Wow. You got to be careful about connecting with leeches because when God blesses you, it, it, it gives you and wow. creates a generous heart. For me, every time I go, I take, I take the bill every time, John, because I'm just blessed like that. Amen. Yes, I'm not are. looking for you to pull your yeah. wallet like my son said. No false sense of pretending like you're going to grab for your wallet. You ain't got to do none of that with me. You right. slow on the draw, I got the bill. Right. Me and Deacon and Shalanda have fought before yeah. over who going to pay the bill. She got mad. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm your sister. I'm the big sister. Well, I'm your pastor. Well, you know what? You, you, you blessed folk, but you don't know how to receive. Shook me. Yeah. I said, oh, my goodness. Yeah. She said, I'm trying to bless you. How do I get blessed if I never can sow nothing into you? Every time we go out, you want to pay for the meal. Every time we do something, you want to buy it. Well, where does my blessing come I mean, from if yeah. I never get to sow into you? And she was serious about yes, that. Yes, she was. And I said, God, help me yeah. to be a better recipient. Yeah. You didn't just bless me to be a blessing. Right. You are blessing others to bless me as That's, well. That is correct. I had got comfortable giving, but I wasn't comfortable receiving. Right. I wasn't comfortable receiving. Right. So I said, God, help me with this. But as a, a, a blessed person in the oh, Lord, somebody. you have a desire to bless everybody because you understand Genesis chapter 12, right. that you're blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. So if they don't give you nothing back, you're not looking for nothing anyway because God already done blessed you and yeah. you have more than enough. Hallelujah. So you're not looking for a come up over here. No. You're not looking for a come up over no. there. No. God has blessed you so much that if nobody ever gave you anything, God has instantly yeah. Blessed you. Yeah, yeah. And, and real quick, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. This month yes. in the world, and many of you probably don't even know it, but this month in the world, all over the world, the, thank you, daughter. It's yes, Pastor's yes, Appreciation Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I, got, I got a couple people standing. See? Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So what happens in the month of October, people all over the world, they got it. They understand the concept of appreciating the pastor. Yes. But, Pastor, the thing about this, and, and I'm going to let you go to your story. When you were talking, the Lord said that the oil yes. runs down yes, yes. Aaron's, Aaron's beard, beard. Yes. Onto, the, onto the skirt of the garment. Yes. Now, yes. watch the revelation God showed me. We say it all the time. Like pulpit. Yes. Like, like pew. You. Yes. Now, the thing about this. It's because we're good stewards. Yes. It's only right yes. that we see sons and daughters that are good stewards. Yes, 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 yes. See, I, 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 I'm saying this right now because some of you finna catch this. Some of you finna catch this. Pastor and I own several pieces of property. And I prophesy that you're about to own more property than what you have right now. And I speak this prophetically. And it's not, I'm talking about before the year is out. I'm talking yes. a 30 to 60 day escrow is yes, going to happen for yes, somebody. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, shut mine, shut mine. See, if it can happen, it doesn't surprise me that we send pink slips. Because yes. Pastor and I, we don't have car notes. Yes. That's how we're able to give cars away. So because we, we don't have we don't have we don't have car notes, God is doing what, what, what's already yes. on the house. The, the fingerprint. Yes. The fingerprint. The connection. The connection. Yes. See, Pastor, and don't deny the connection. Yes. Yes. Don't deny the connection. Yes. Don't get what you got and then try to act like you don't know how you got it. And I, I, I prophesy the year of when my ship come in, them ships done sailed. I don't know how many times. Y'all ain't done nothing. You got to understand this, beloved. If we speak life over you, it's nothing wrong with coming back to say, and I, with a seed down. Now, let me help you. If that seed ain't moving you, then it ain't moving God. Amen. And it sure ain't moving me. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes, so y'all got, got to receive what we're saying today. This ain't about money. It's about just coming back to say. Yes. Yes. Oh. 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 Oh.
it's, it's, it's in the flow, Pastor. Yeah. Now you talked about because 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 we 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 you know we we've cut folk off who were leeches. For some folks, they want to ride on your coattail. They don't want to work to get with what you have. Got to cut them off. Now she's going to Genesis 13. She talked to she, she said some folks are leeches. You got to watch them leeches, man. The leeches will take, they take the nourishment out of you. Yes. Now what they do, they, 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 they suck, they suck you dry. And when they dry, when you dry, they're gone, Kevin. You can't call them, you can't, they ain't nowhere to be found. I know I'm talking, I'm telling the truth. Yes. Yes. And y'all better be careful because in Genesis 12, he told Abel to get away from his family. Yes, yes, yes. Some of your leeches. I'm trying, daughter, but they got a look on their face. Some, some, some of your worst leeches are your family members. Because they depend on you more than they depend on the God that you serve. Brother Gerald, we got to stop helping everybody. Because why do I need to serve your God if you're going to answer my, my, my prayer? I don't need your God when you answer my prayer. I thank God my mom and daddy didn't give me everything. At that time, I didn't like it. But oh, ain't we rich today. Oh, I thank God. I thank God. See, because you can't appreciate some stuff because it's always just handed to you. God, I'm saying something here. A no is a blessing sometimes. Oh, it'll, it'll make a better woman out of you. Don't get mad because mama didn't give it to you. Yes, yes. You take that holy indignation anger, turn it into something great, and say, I will never forget the day I asked you for X, Y, and Z, but it made me a better man. It made me a better woman. And guess what? Let me tell you something. If you teach a man how to fish, ah. he'll eat for a lifetime. You got to teach him how to do it. So... So, Pastor, you talked about that leech spirit in Genesis 13. You want to go hey, there? Amen. Yeah, let's, let's go to 11 first. Uh-oh. Let's, let's go to 11. Up. All right. Um, so you all can see it in its proper context here. Woo! Okay. Glory to God. So we talking about, hallelujah. Uh, Somebody uh, shout, ain't we rich today? Ain't we rich today? Yes, Ooh. yes, Pastor, yes, somebody, yes, Pastor, somebody just shifted something uh, in the spirit. Ah, yes, ah, uh, yes. Somebody believe that. Yeah, yes. Because <laughs> I, 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 I'm talk, somebody just said it, and they're not looking at their bank account. Come on, Pastor. They just spoke this prophetically. Yes, sir. And God said it's getting ready to manifest here on earth. Yes, you sir. just shifted an angel just to come down. I'm trying to tell somebody. Okay, Pastor, come on. Go to Genesis 11. Genesis 11. All right. Woo! Open oh, your God. Bibles. I need you all to open your Bibles. Yeah, Hallelujah. We're going to put it on the jumbotrons. Go on to verse number 27. We'll read from the NLT. We'll just do that for the sake of time on today. Um, oh, yeah. You all take your seats on today. We, 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 I know it's not Bible study, but we study Bible in every service here. Shout <laughs> say amen. Hallelujah. Let's see. Genesis eleven twenty seven. This is the family of Terah. This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. Your Bibles read like that? Amen. Yeah? Anybody Bible not reading like that? You need to be the way. Just say, hold up a minute. All right, we're on the same page. Number 28. So Terah's family, he had three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran had a son named Lot. Verse 28. But Haran, who was the father of Lot, he died in the Ur of Chaldees. The Ur of Chaldees is Babylon, okay? The land of his birth while his father Terah was still living. So Terah buried his son, Haran. But his grandson, Lot, is still alive. 29, meanwhile, Abram and Nahor, the two sons that are still living, they married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. Milka and her sister Ishka were daughters of Nahor's brother, Haran. A lot of incest going on. That was, I guess, appropriate back then, but we're going to keep going. That ain't my point today. Verse number 30, hallelujah. But Sarai was unable 
to become pregnant and she had no children. So Abram's wife, Sarai, had no children. So picture. we have Har Haran who died. Right. And we have Nahor and Abram who are still alive Amen. with their father, Terah. Amen. Right? Amen. So they in, this is what happened. Sarah couldn't get pregnant. Verse 31. One day Terah, who is the father of Abram and Nahor, took his son Abram and his daughter-in-law Sarai, who is Abram's wife. Your Bible's reading like that? Amen. And he took his grandson Lot, the son of who? Haran, the oh. one that died. Yep. And they moved away from the Ur of Chaldeans. They moved away from Babylon. Amen. He was headed to where? He was on his way to Canaan, the land that floweth with milk and honey. Yeah. But they stopped in Haran. Well, wait a minute. You said his son name was Haran. Yeah, his son was Haran, and they stopped in Haran. Good. Good Haran means delay. So I don't know if he chose to stay in Haran because he was bereaving the death of the transition of his son. But for whatever reason, when they got to Haran, they didn't quite make it to Canaan because they stopped in delay the place called Haran. This is the problem, Elder Elect Denise. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran at delay and settled there. Some of you are being detained by some Harans on the day, and you're missing the blessing that God has for you. You will catch it before we leave here today. Verse 32, Terah, who is the father of Abram and Nahor that's still living, he died... While he was in delay. Are you awake in this place? Gerald, what that says to me, he was on his way to Canaan. He took a pit stop to Haran and he stayed there too long and he ended up dying and never get to the place of promise, princess. Some of you are being detained by people, things, places that won't allow you to get to your Canaan. And because your allegiance is so great to the other people in the earth realm, you are forfeiting your destiny and your promise because you can't get over the death of something that was simply meant to cause you to be delayed. Terah never left Haran, Minister Denise. He died in the place of delay. I don't know where your place of delay is. Some of you are wasting time on a dead-end job that God has already told you to open up your own business. But because it is comfortable for you to get a paycheck from somebody, you don't want to step out on faith and get to your Canaan. you rather stay in Haran. But every week you're waking up complaining about your dead-end job. Some of us are in dead-end relationships. Help me, Holy Ghost. That man, if he ain't married you 10 years later, he's not going to don't marry your baby. Hallelujah. My mother used to always tell me, why buy a cow when you get free milk? It makes no sense to put a ring on nothing that you're giving away for free. If you'd have made the man of God respect you, hallelujah, you would have had a ring by now. But because you're giving yourself freely, you're simply delayed by a distraction in Haran. And here it is, 10 years later, you to my one day when you get married. Baby, baby, wake up and smell the coffee. You're in a place of Haran. Ditch that zero and get you a hero. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not where we're going on today, but I felt led to tell somebody, you and your Haran on today, you're in a place of detainment that is preventing you from getting to your purpose and your destiny, and you'll never give that. And if you don't wake up and shake yourself, you will find yourself dead in the place that God never intended you to be. He dies. He dies in Haran. Didn't it say, Mariah, he was on his way to Canaan? He was on his way there, Minister Watson, and he never got there because he died because he entertained too many distractions. I don't know what your distraction is. It could be a 36, 24, 36. Your distraction could be a place. I don't know what your distraction is on the day, but if God called you to Canaan, you need to get out of Haran and get to moving. So the next verse, which is not verse 33, but it's chapter 12, verse 1. This is about reading the book in its continuity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So we saw that Terah died in Haran in 1132. Is that correct? Amen. Are y'all awake in this place? Yes. So the next verse is what? Genesis 12 and 1. Yes. The Lord has said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family. Did, is your Bible reading like that? Delana, they will say that I'm making this, but your Bible said that, Delana. Okay, all right. Yours say that, Sonia? No, yours say that, Helen? Oh, yours? Okay, the Elder Watson said her say that too. Leave your native country. In other words, get away from the Ur Chaldees. Leave Haran. I know your daddy died there, but if you're not careful, you're going to die there too. Leave there your relatives and your father's family yeah. and go to the land I will show you. Several things stick out about this particular scripture. Yeah. Leave your family. Family is all we got. That's all we are was with one another. They that do it the will of my father which is in heaven is my brother and my sister. I don't have no allegiance to no earthly being that ain't walking out the word of God. Amen. I'll pray for you. I'll disciple you. I'll witness you. But my greatest commitment is to my heavenly father, Amen. which is in heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So much so that he says, shake them because where I'm about to take you, they can't go. Some of y'all trying to take people in places that they simply cannot go there. You'll end up dragging them there and they'll mess it up for you. You'll get there and you won't be able to stay there because you done brought people who wasn't called to be there with you anyway. But your allegiance is greater to your family than it is to your God. I can't leave my brother. I can't leave my sister. I can't leave my father. I can't leave my kids. Well, if God told you to leave them, you better shake rocks. Because God could be using your buster move moment to help save your brother, your sister, your mother, and your father. Sometimes they too dependent on you that they can't look up to God. Leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to the land. I I'm not even going to tell you where I'm taking you, Gerald. Some of y'all didn't hear what I said. Because some of you don't go until you know for sure where he's telling you to go. I got to know the, the download, God. I got to know when I'm going, how I'm going, where I'm going, who I'm going to see. You got to give me all of the detail. God, I ain't got to give you none of that. You go to the land and I'll show you when you get there. When you get to moving and you get up from your loader bar and you get up from your Canaan and you get up from your, your place that I'm telling you to leave from and you start getting up in faith and moving in that direction, I'll order and direct your steps. I'll keep you in perfect peace. I'll set you up, hallelujah, to make a connection with the right people. All I need for you is to be obedient and start moving in the right direction. Don't tell me you need to know when and how to do it and how much to take and who going to give it. God said you don't need to know the details. Because if I gave you the details, it won't require any faith of you to obey me. But I'm looking for somebody who believe and have not seen. I'm looking for somebody who trusts me wholeheartedly when they don't know all of the details. But you say, God, I trust you enough to obey you. Even when it don't make sense. You go and I'll show you. I'm not going to show you and then you go. Somebody need to hear this on a day. I'm not going to show you and then you go. I want you to go and then as you go, I'm going to show you. And if you decide to do this, Des, I'm going to make you into a great nation. That's number two. A great nation. I'm going to make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. Do y'all Bibles read like that? And you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. If you know who God's blessed are, for me, I don't care how much you have. When we go on the East Coast, I don't care if they fare better than me or not. I'm putting my seed on folk that's blessed because if those that's blessed, God said he will bless those that bless me. And if they bless, that means I will be blessed for sowing into them. But what I will not do is cast my bread upon the swine. I'm not giving my holy substance that God has entrusted in my care and put it on no bad soil. You don't get a return because you put seed on bad soil. You don't get a return. 
a pastor, you can't get a return because you put good seed on bad soil. You thinking because I put seed that I may not get a harvest. No, I put a whole bunch of seed in some ground that was hard as a rock and it didn't have the ability to receive my seed. And guess what? It didn't produce nothing. I just sowed a seed and didn't get a harvest on it. Because the seed, the soil was not good. You can put good seed on bad soil and not get a harvest. That's why you got to learn how to bless those that are good soil. Amen. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who treat you with contempt. Yeah. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Verse 4, Elder B. So this is what Abraham well, I may as well go on to do what God told me to do. It said he departed, Deacon Watson, as the Lord had instructed. And who went with him? Oh, my goodness. Lot the nephew went with him. He said, leave your family, leave your relatives, leave your country. But Lot said, you ain't getting rid of me. Lot said, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck to you like glue. It said he did what God told him to do, and Lot went with him. Abraham, or Abram at this time, was 75 years old when he left Haran. He had to leave this because we know some 25 years later, he's going to have a son named Isaac. But he had to leave Haran first. Y'all better wake up. I can't throw it no slower than this. He had to leave the place of delay first in order to get the baby. He going to try to help God through Ishmael. He going to try to help God. Hallelujah. I think when he's about 86 years old, him and Sarah going to hook up something to try to help God. God, I don't need your help. I told you I was going to bless your old wounds. The ones that they said couldn't have no kids. I don't need your help. But 25 years later... After he left Haran, yeah. God says, I'm going to give you the son that I promised you. Yeah. Yeah. It says here in verse 5, he took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, and all his wealth, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran. Apostle, sometime when you in Haran, because if they said he had wealth, livestock, and a household he got out of Haran. That means he gathered these things when he was in Haran. Right. And sometime when you're in the place of delay, the enemy will grease your palms too and make you think that you're in Canaan in order to present a counterfeit so you will think that this is where God has told you to stay. And if you don't know the difference and you're not discerning, you will start thinking Haran is Canaan. You'll think Haran is Canaan because you got some livestock there. I'm talking to some of you that in places you don't have no business being, but because they didn't gave you a few little Benjamins, you think that that's the place that God has called you to be, and you're stuck there. You're in a place of delay. And the enemy has you there because he's giving you a carrot. Because you don't know the difference between Haran and Canaan. So you're in Haran and calling it Canaan. You're in Haran and calling it Canaan. But the enemy actually has you in a place of delay. But because you're not spiritually discerned, you don't know he's just simply greasing your palms to keep you delayed. I can't throw it no slower than that. So that, when I looked at this, Elder Watson, it said he took his wife, his nephew, all his wealth, his livestock, and the people into his house at Haran. He got some stuff when he was over there. And then he headed for Canaan with all his fortune. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up a camp beside the Oak of Moriah. At that time, the area was inhabited by the Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord 
who appeared to him. So we see Abram going through the motions. He left Haran, the place of delay. He's getting ready to go and leave the Earl Chaldees as well. He leaves Haran. He takes his livestock. He moves over to Canaan. Look at verse number 13. Chapter 13. Thank you, Apostle. When he was in chapter 12, I need you to go back and read it. There was a famine. Well, let me, you know what? I'm going to show it to you because I don't want to depend on y'all to go and read it. You still need to go and read it. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm going to show it to you here in this verse so you can see it with your own eyes. Help me, Holy Ghost. Verse number 10. So he continued traveling. He went over into Canaan. At verse number 10, at that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan. Well, God, you telling me to go somewhere. I just left the place of delay where it looked like I was blessed at when it was actually a delay. And then you tell me to go to Canaan, supposedly the land of milk and honey, and ain't no food over there. You told me to leave the place of Haran where there is where there's supposed to be a delay and no substance, but yet I got all of these cattle and livestock. You tell me to leave there, and you tell me to go to the place of Canaan, a land of milk and honey, but when I get there, there's a famine. Some of you still don't get it. You told me to leave Haran, that's supposed to be a place of delay, but yet I got these livestock, I got these serving. I got all these cattle from over there and you told me to leave there and you tell me to go to Canaan, the land that Floyd princess with milk and honey and then when I get there, it's a famine. You tell me to leave from over here where I got it going on and you tell me to go over here where it's all dried up at. You tell me to leave from over here where it looks like it's real good and then you tell me to go over here where it looks like I'm going to have a struggle moment over here. Somebody need to learn to obey God even when you can't trace him and it doesn't make sense in the spirit realm. God is not into making sense in your common head. Because some of y'all arguing with God. You're trying to tell him how good Haran is. You're trying to tell him why you won't leave Haran to get to Canaan. And you're simply delaying your blessing. You're simply delaying your blessing. And you keep saying, God, when? God is saying, when you obey me. I told you when we started, God is a respecter of faith and he's a respecter of obedience. God is not trying to get you to rationalize his instruction. He wants to see you obedient. That's what the prophet Isaiah said. If you are willing and obedient, Isaiah 1 and 19, you shall eat the good of the land. You want to be willing, but you don't want to be obedient. You, the, the, the heart, you know that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That is, ain't no place for that excuse because that's simply what that is. You want the hand of God, but you don't want to be obedient. Get away from there, Abram. Go where I'm telling you to go, and when you start going, then I'll show you. How many of you can do that? You don't know where you're going. All you know is God is telling you to go. All you know is God is telling you to do. He didn't give you no instructions. He didn't tell you how long it's going to take you. He just said, I'll show you when you get going. But where he tells him to go, this place is coming up short. Some of us start scratching our head like, okay, Jesus, did the Lord tell me to do this? You start going back and forth with God. You start charging God foolish. God didn't tell me to do this. God didn't tell me that. Why hope for what you can see? If you can see it, you don't need any faith. God is trying to build your faith, not in what you can see, but in those things that you cannot see simply because God promised it to you. You got to hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering. For he that promised is faithful. I believe that's Hebrews 10, 35. You got to hold fast to that. It doesn't make sense. It, 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 whether you understand it or not, God is not interested in that. Well, it, it don't make sense. You cannot ca cast away your confidence. It shall yield a great recompense of reward. God is not interested. A double-minded man, James. You're unstable in all your ways. One minute you believe God, the next minute you don't. As long as God give you what you want, you all right. As long as he promotes you, you okay. As long as he moves to the beat of your drum, you're doing good. God is blessing me. God is good. But what happens when he doesn't move on your terms? What happens when he tells you to get on his page? 
What happens when he doesn't give you the promotion? When he doesn't allow the foreclosure process to stop? What happens when he doesn't allow the bankruptcy to stop? What happens when the business does shut down? Do you still believe God then? Thank you for tuning in to the B-Buzz broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.